Okay, hi. We've got uh, Simon Thorpe, band leader of Jiving Miss Daisy, here with us this morning. Morning, Simon. Morning. Hope we uh, haven't not going to take up too much of your time. We're just going to have a quick chat with Simon just to understand a little bit better about his background and uh, get to know a little bit more about Jive and Miss Daisy and what they have to offer. So if you're potentially looking at booking the band, um, he'll answer some of the, the frequently asked questions that we find uh, prospective clients are looking to get answers for. So um, let's crack straight on and um, get into it. So Simon, how long have you been a musician for them? Uh, I think I've been a musician pretty much all my life. I started playing the violin when I was about eight, I think, at school, and then I um, played guitar and sang and played drums in sort of rock bands when I was in my teens and twenties, and uh, settled onto the double bass in my late twenties playing jazz, and that's the thing that I've been doing ever since, really. Since, right. And, and have you had any formal music education, or uh, is it self-taught yeah i went to the guildhall school of music and drama in london and did the jazz uh course there um and uh, but a lot of uh, a lot of self-taught experience along the way too yeah that's the, the, the best type of teaching really <laughs> isn't it so um i mean how long when did you set up jive and miss daisy it was quite a few years ago now when yeah was that exactly? i think it was uh i think it must have been about 1999 actually so yes we're we're into our kind of 12th 13th year now Wow, so bag, bags of experience there. And what, what, how did you, what, what kind of gigs were you doing when you first started out? The well, band the first, how it progressed? The first few gigs we did were for um, swing dance uh, nights in London at the 100 Club and another one called Jitterbugs, which was at, uh, was at Notre Dame Hall in Leicester Square. It's moved since then. Uh, but that's where, we, that's where we started playing uh, for, for swing dances, yeah. Okay, and then, so w when did you start playing at uh, corporate and private functions like, like weddings and that type of thing? Uh, when did that start? Well, that, that started soon after that, really. Um, uh, people started uh, seeing the band and saying, yeah, we'd like you to play at our wedding, or sometimes we'd like you to play at our corporate event. Um, and since then, we've uh, worked with agencies such as yourself, who's, uh, who's helped things along the way and, and made us work some more, so... That's all been good. Right, right. And that, that's very much kind of been a, a, a natural and kind of organic growth really, yeah, hasn't it? Yeah, I think so. In that place. Right, right. And um, the kind of style that you would uh, you would say kind of sums up Jive and Miss Daisy, I, I suspect in a way it's different from um, the, the kind of repertoire that the band play at a public show. Mm -hmm might be quite different like Ronnie Scott's or a or 100 Club or one of those kind of you know kind of jazz clubs that you play is very different to, to a certain extent what you play at a function but yeah would I'd be right I mean we tailor um, we tailor what we're playing to the event that we're playing for so um, at a wedding it's going to be probably some more dancey stuff and well it depends sometimes at a function people want things to be a, a certain theme or a certain style or from a jazz from a certain era, so that kind of thing, or to set the atmosphere, or to be background music some of the time. So it all depends on what the client wants, really. Right, right. And and uh, I mean, if you kind of had to sum up the style of Jive and Miss Daisy, you know, in a sentence, what 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 would it be? Did you sum that up? I suppose we'd call it uh, swinging good time dance music. Right. Okay. That's great. That's great. And and. Uh, you know, in your experience with uh, obviously, uh, obviously the, the, idea, the, 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 the idea of having a swing band has, has become very, at, at an event, has become very popular over the years. How much of a part do you kind of feel that, that uh, uh, you know, a band like Jive Miss Daisy plays at, at an event? You know, is it, do you feel it's kind of vital or do you, do you find that you're in the background a lot of the time? Well, um, sometimes we can be in the background if that's what people want. Uh, quite often, if it's uh, for the beginning of a, an evening where it's just drinks, they want the band pretty much to be in the background because people want to be talking. Uh, later in the evening, they'll obviously want to be dancing, so we, we play a different kind of music for that. Um, and also, as I said, it, it depends if they have a particular theme for the evening, if they want it to be 1920s theme or a 1940s wartime yeah. theme, we, we tailor the music to go with that and also, to a degree, the appearance of the band and the stage to go with that. So, yeah, I mean, the the, uh, the prohibition 
theme has become very popular yeah. over the last, last couple of years or so. And you, the band you actually played at uh, the launch of uh, Boardwalk Empire, yes, which we did, uh, yeah, up nicely for that that type of event, doesn't it? So, um, I, do you find people very much do dance to the to to this kind of style of music that you play? Yes, they do. I, I mean, it's uh, it is very much dance music, um, albeit of a certain era, but it still gets people up and dancing. And we can we vary the music as well into we tend to play some more um general dancing music towards the end of the evening which may be like you know latin things like a tequila or maybe something like a ray charles or um dinah washington kind of stuff so it's it's general dance music but with a, a swinging kind of feel so so very much kind of keeping it keeping the sophisticated box ticked but making sure that kind of moving away slightly from that stat straight down the line kind of swing yeah. style and we often get um people as well some of the older people they'll dance and they'll also be really interested in just listening to the band because they love to be entertained by it they may not want to be dancing all the time but they certainly like to be able to do a quick step uh on these the more traditional dance stuff which some of the older people like to do yeah sure 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 so um in, in terms of the kind of band sizes, what, what, um, how, how do the band line up in that sense? Well, the, we go out in uh, basically two lineups, a six-piece or a nine-piece, uh, both of which include both female and male vocal. Um, but uh, obviously in the, the larger lineup, there's, well, there's two saxes, trumpet and trombone. So it begins to work towards a kind of big band sound. Uh, and that all a six piece how, the six what piece uh, well yeah. that would be just trumpet and tenor sax and again vocals piano bass and drums um, and that's um, perhaps a little bit more adaptable on the night because a, a smaller band is obviously slightly more dynamic but if you want uh, more of a big band sound then the nine piece is the thing to go for so either way really depending on the size partly of the venue as well uh, sure. a lot of uh, a lot of people are restricted um uh, to the certain to that six piece purely by the size of their venue yeah, really, the stage. So, yeah yeah so i mean in terms of kind of how you generally kind of come with the band you come pretty much self-contained would yes, that be right we do. yeah we do we have our own pa system some lights um all we need really is a a suitable size stage and some mains electricity for the pa and lights which is uh quite modest so it doesn't uh, draw a huge current or anything like that Right. Okay. Okay. Fine. So yeah, I mean, in, in uh, you, you haven't had any problems with uh, playing in marquees or anything like that. No, in terms no. Of, so that type of thing. No, and all the stuff is uh, PAT tested, so it's all uh, been you know safety tested. All, all the technical boxes are ticked there as well. So I mean, in terms of uh, kind of requests that client clients might have, you, you, you're happy to do a first dance request? Would I be right in saying oh, that? Oh, certainly. Yes. Um, we do that, and we're also. We'll also do a um, certain amount of other requests if people can get them in. If the client can get the request in in time, obviously it's not necessarily easy for us to uh, come up with an arrangement of a song they want if they ask for it on the night. But um, a few days or a few weeks notice can really can, that can really help. We could do specific things if that's what a client wants. Sure, it's sure. Also I mean, a meant pretty extensive repertoire list on the website, as you know, so um, people can choose stuff from that. Sure, sure. It's it's also worth mentioning a lot of people don't necessarily know what an arrangement is, but uh, do you want to just ex kind of explain why you can't, even though you might know a song, you'd have to actually write an arrangement for that particular band lineup? Can you explain how that works? Yes. Um, I mean, a, an arrangement involves um, quite a few decisions about what kind of tempo it's going to be, what kind of feel, what kind of style, what, what key it's going to be in, whether it's for male or female vocal. Um, and whether it's going to feature particular instruments. Um, some of those things you can decide on the hoof, um, and we, we're very happy to do that because we're jazz musicians, we're very versatile. Um, but depending on what the client wants, um, if they want something that's a bit more fixed at a particular tempo or style, it's, it's better to get that request in, as I say, a, a few weeks right. before. Yeah, and just kind of playing on the idea of um, you know your versatility, versatility as, as as musicians. Obviously, the 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 kind of the term reading the room comes up, really, isn't it? Um, uh, can you maybe explain how that comes into you know the performance element at, at a particular event? Yes. Um, well, um, you can imagine that sometimes um, 
you will try and play something that's a bit too fast for people if they've just been eating a huge meal, say, <laughs> and it may be a good idea to uh, to move slowly into the uh, the more active dancing um, part of the evening. Um, other times, it may be that um, the uh, client wants something where we come straight in with a bang and do our, our loudest, fastest song at the beginning. So it, it all depends on how the evening's going, obviously what the client particularly wants, but we like to see how it's going on the on the evening and tailor the music to go with that. So You've got the kind of the breadth of, of repertoire and experience exactly. to be able to so, twist and turn set list throughout the evening depending on what, what you feel is needed in your experience. Exactly. Then. If it seems okay. more appropriate to play some sort of bossanovas or something to uh, gradually set the scene before people start dancing, then that's that's the way we do it. Sure, sure. Okay, fine. And and when you're not playing, mm -hmm. I know we're talking about driving Miss Daisy and performing here, but when you're not playing, um, wh what options do, do clients have? They can they can supply the music which uh, which they can play through your system and you'll manage that for them. Is that yes, right? Yes, that's uh, that happens quite often. Uh, that's quite a popular option. Um, people will bring a, a playlist on an iPod, and they can play it through our through our PA system. Um, and alternatively, of course, they can book a DJ independently. And the usual arrangement there would be for us to play for a couple of sets and then the DJ will take over for the later part of the evening. That's quite a, a popular way of doing it, too. Sure, sure. And, and just kind of playing on the uh, on, on that, just concentrating on the, the, the set times there. Um, obviously, when you come to book the band, you don't necessarily need to, to specify when you want those set times, but overall it's about two hours of playing time. Is that right? How would you, how would you normally, how, what's in your experience, how do you normally yeah. split that? Um, depending on, on the, the time frame for the evening's entertainment or the evening's activities, we would normally do um, three lots of, of three 40-minute sets or two one-hour sets. Um, but, uh, it, you know, those are the most normal ones. But anyway, it would normally be about two hours total of playing time. That's at least one break then really, yeah that's so. right one or two breaks and because we find that um, the musicians obviously need need a break in between but also sometimes people dancing need a break as well and sure. to break sure. up a bit of variety okay okay so um, you, you we can if clients want obviously the, these days people do want you know if they're spending a lot of money on a band they want to go and see the band they mm -hmm. might want to have a kind of a chat with you beforehand yeah. and <laughs> You, you play live regularly. Um, can you maybe just let us know how, where, and when the uh, people can see you? Yes, yeah, sure. Well, we we do play um, quite regularly around London. Uh, we do, as I say, some of the swing dance nights. Um, we still do some of those. Um, we also play fairly regularly at Ronnie Scott's. Um, on the at the moment, we're doing uh, Sunday lunchtime slots, um, and that comes up for us um, every couple of months or so. So we've usually got one of those or, or two of those in the book. Um, Sunday lunchtime is quite a good slot for people to come and see us. Uh, sure, sure. And, and anyone that uh, is 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 interested in seeing the band, just just to get in touch with me, Brad, through through the contact form on the band's website, and we'll make sure that you can you can go on a on a guest list for that. That's mm. no problem. Yes, that's right. So um, there's plenty of opportunity to 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 see the band live there. Then so. Yeah. Um, okay, fine. Well, listen, I think we've got uh, we've we've got a real kind of good insight there into you know what people can expect from Jive and Miss Daisy. So um, I think we'll, we'll leave it there. And, you know, if anyone's got any inquiries, just get in touch with us through the website. Yeah, you've probably seen on this particular video, there will be a, a telephone number and the website address uh, reeled across the bottom of the video anyway. So, uh, but if you've got any questions, just give us a shout. So uh, thanks for your time, Simon. Thank and uh, we'll see you performing soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. All right. Cheers then.